This is a short video on implementation strategies for iGaze users. Believe it or not, this is a way for them to access communication with their eyes. And when I say believe it or not, I mean believe it. Why would we put a child on eye gaze? Typically we do that because vision is a relative strength. That can mean that they have a visual impairment, but it is still stronger than their motor skills and or their hearing skills. Direct select with a pointer finger is not reliable or that eye gaze is better and faster than using switches. To set up for success, you'll need to have visual feedback for the dwell time. It can be a pointer, you can highlight, you can have a shrinking dot, a clock dial. Various visual supports in different systems are available. You will need to play around with dwell time to be sure that the time is short enough that the student can stay still and hold the dwell time and long enough that they can look at something, decide they don't want it, and look off it before it activates the button. If you decide to have a pointer, it means that the child will see a hand everywhere they look. This can be an excellent way to know where the student is looking, and it can also be a big distraction, and they seem to be chasing that hand, not realizing they're controlling it. So play around with this setting. Be sure that your child is positioned in a way that promotes head stability and fosters a level of alertness. If you have to be in too significant of a recline, you may reduce the level of alertness and cause them to fall asleep. So be sure that you're sitting as upright as possible to promote level of alertness, but still maintain head stability. We do not mount the device where we hope the child could maintain head control, but where they actually maintain head control. You can work on head control and sitting up where your head is more to midline in other ways, but since sitting with head control is hard and communication is hard, we don't pair those. We mount where they have head control, not where we want them to have head control. Most devices require the distance between the eyes and the screen to be between 18 and 22 inches, which is about the length of your arm. If you know that it has to be that far away, then you may have to have bigger buttons if your child's vision is poor. Some kids have better vision farther away and they can actually do more buttons at that distance than if it was close up. What about glasses? Some systems work a little bit better than others, but glasses are not a deterrent from using the device. Have each one try it and try to get a calibration with the glasses on if you're going to be wearing glasses when you're using the device. Many systems have optional add-ons or inclusion software, including look to learn magic eye or sensory eye effects, or Tomoko, and those are eye gaze training games, and I highly recommend using those. I use them about 10 minutes, three times a day at the beginning of using eye gaze to build up endurance. We're building up endurance because the eye is an organ and a muscle, right? So um, it's kind of like pulling weights and holding them straight at your hips. Eventually, you're gonna have to put the weights down to the, your sides or pull them up to your shoulders in order to give those muscles that are now quivering a break. If you set the weights down completely, that's kind of like closing your eyes. So what we want to do is work on near and far. So if they're looking at the device between 18 and 22 inches and they make a selection, maybe they pick a balloon, let the balloon fly in the distance, which allows their eyes to focus on something distal or bring a book that they chose closer to their eyes than 18 to 22 inches so that they can refocus closely to an item and then go back to the screen. We're building that range of motion for their eyes. I use a magic wand. It's just a pipe cleaner pull into a circle. It allows me to direct an eye without using my hand or arm covering any kind of camera 
and it also works with all device users. Even direct select users like to put their pointer finger through that hole. So it allows you to direct a child to buttons without covering the screen with your arm or hand. Remember, it's still a language system. We can get super caught up in the eye gaze system, but remember, we are here to teach language. So there's choice making, there's social language, there's core words, there's teaching acceptance and rejection. And don't be afraid of two choice contrasting pages, pages with more and all done, pages that are very simple and moving up to very complex. Trust me, they meant to say it. One thing we need to do is teach that they are using their voice and that we are going to react accordingly. If they say something, if they make a choice, we don't say, did they mean to say that? We say, you picked bubbles, I'm gonna blow bubbles. And if the student gets mad because they didn't want bubbles, then they know it matters where I look. That's a teaching time. It takes between six months and two years to get proficient at eye gaze. So we are not saying find this, find that, and directing them to um, find what we want them to find. We're letting them explore. We're letting them understand that they are controlling the screen and not watching the screen. And when they hold their gaze long enough on a button to make it speak, then we respond to the language accordingly. Modeling still applies. I know that sounds strange, but you can model with your hand or you can turn it towards yourself and model with your eyes. It's important that they see how other people use the device and how other people's choice of words results in different options. So they've picked bubbles, they're mad. You might remodel looking at the device and picking balloons and then you think the balloons come out and they realize, oh, they got what I wanted and that's because they looked at a different picture. So if you have more questions about eye gaze or if you want more information on any of um, particulars on systems, give us a call at Special Ed Technology Center and you can set up a tech assist or a consult. Have a great day.